Okay, this is the agenda. Basically, it's very straightforward. I just put to who am I and then mission, benchmark result. Oh, looks like I updated that part. Maybe order is could be wrong, but we will try to find together the what is the root cause with the aura and uh, row. Row means the beam row type. Then later on, the, uh, I will introduce to my solution and how we how we did that. I will share the benchmarks and a little bit internal what I did and how I did those kind of things. Uh, basically, I live in the San Francisco and I work with the Paul Alta Networks. Paul Alta Networks is the firewall company and we use heavily Apache Beam for our securing to our customers, whoever used our ser services. And since 2019, I am using the Apache Beam. Before that, I used other open source frameworks like Spark, Hadoop, and so on. Okay, before before going to the second slide, I just want to do a quick, you know, the survey. How many of you you are using Apache Beam? Okay, how many of you you are using the Beam Circle on your jobs? That's one, two, one, two. Okay, I also use that three. <laughs> how many of you use Avro in on your Beam pipeline? Okay. Usually, you know, the this talk is at least on at Palo Alto we are heavily used Beam Stuckel, and tomorrow I will explain the, our infrastructure. But basically, I stop counting after the ten thousand jobs we use Beam Stuckel with the ten thousand jobs, and all of them is generated by the Stuckel. And this is the you know the that's why we see the issue maybe when later on we start. Discussing the whole mission is that you know the I am working I am not working for government I am working for commercial that it, which means that money is important then the mission is that why the our streaming jobs cost is very high and why the SQL is SQL latency is slower than the compare with the handwritten beam beam jobs then we start investigating to that things we will. Together investigate actually, you know, the uh, in this talk, but actually this talk is created by the this, this mission. Is it clear for everybody? Okay. Okay, let's define the root cause. And as I mentioned that we are using the SQL, then most of you guys that you don't use the Beam SQL. That's why first I need to explain how the Beam SQL is working. Maybe you can have the idea about it this talk, the part of the talk is i i took from the andrews andrews presentation because i learned from him and then now i i use that on our jobs basically on sql side it's just a sql string and string is not working right runnable it's not runnable things then on the beam side we feed that string to SQL transform that query, it's still not runnable because it is just string passing their function. But behind of the scenes, Beam used to take the leverage of the call side and call side is parsed that string then create the pipeline. Creating pipeline is the just first step. When you submit your job, depends on the how you are running your job, but basically we are using data flow when we submit the, our jobs, it is kind of compile time. It's not real runtime, pure runtime envir environment. It generates the pipeline based on your SQL, like writing the pipeline as a Java code. And this is a sample SQL, and you see that it's select ID, convert price, and multiply price with 10, then filter with the item equals to my item. And it's, it generated this Java code behind of the scenes. But to generate the Java code, it needs to know some kind of data types, right? It doesn't know that. On, in my company, we use Aura heavily, but maybe you use JSON, 
Arcade or Proto, any any kind of data format. How the SQL cannot run each of the format. That's why the Beam developers is create a raw format, which is the unified format for them. And no matter which format is you are using, everything is turned to the raw behind of the scenes. You don't see that. And also, when I start using the Beam SQL, I wasn't aware of the table provider. Basically, when you say, oh, this, this statement doesn't have it, but on your SQL, when you say the from something else, it needs to look, look at a catalog. And for that catalog is being provided, the table provider, you can implement your own. And also on the shelf, there's a bunch of table providers such as Kafka IO. You know, the Beam has the Kafka IO, Beam SQL has the Kafka table. Or text files, Beam SQL has also table for that. Okay, now I, st I start explaining our use case. You know, the, our use case, we have the Kafka, and we have to read the data from Kafka as an hour. Then our Beam job needs to read and right somewhere else and our use cases could be very very different use cases it could be right it could be filtering it could be aggregation or something else is this pipeline is make sense to you guys You know, when we describe in this way, it's very abstract, actually, right? And when you do the beam, actually, you have to implement these steps, or you have to use those steps some some way. If you are using the beam SQL, the table providers behind of the scenes, they deserialize your data, then turn to the row. But if you use, if you are not using the row, and most of the case, I don't see any people. They use the raw format format on their Kafka or somewhere else. You have to do this conversion part first. Our case is the bind our to generic record. Then your generic record is in memory. Then you have to convert to beam raw. Now, I just showed you a generated code, right? That generated code is running in here. Beam SQL generated code. Let me remind you one, one more time. You know, you see that this two function is take the row in here, but the row is treated by actually this step. Do you see any issue for this pipeline? You can tell me if you see that. Yes. And same same case for here, right? We based our CPU cycle in addition to that and memory. Okay, beside of that, we start seeing that, you know, the initial jobs was, you know, the, when I start using the Beam SQL, I was shocked about that. You know, the, I didn't write anything else, just write the SQL and it was working. When we put to production, we start having more jobs and more jobs. And then eventually we hit some performance issues. What do you do when you hit the performance issues? <laughs> we, we did, you know, the profiling, actually. Data flow is really good for some, some toolings. I, you know, the, I enjoy with this profiler. I put the link, you know, the details, how you can profile the pipelines. And we realized that some of the functions is call a lot, you know, the, it's not normal to call like schema resolution. It's our libraries, part, it's part of the our libraries, but it's called very long time and it's, it's very expensive. Then we, we start doing some research, you know, the, what we can do that. The idea is that for us, you know, the, this is a basic deserialization. As you can see that we give the writer schema and reader schema, then this is the binary byte array. And then we say that, okay, read this 
and this is a beam util method to turn to raw. And four line code. It doesn't seem any, any issue. And we start thinking that how we can optimize this four line code, right? Our profilers show some hints to us, like schema resolution was expensive. Then as you see that previous things, we do do twice everything. Okay, we first we think about that initial approach was that, okay, why we cannot write our own serializer, right? Rather than using the open source one. Because in that model, we have to use our library, turn to generic record and convert to raw. Why maybe we can give a try like reading directly from binary and create the rows. Because our row is super set of the row basically. Auro can have multiple types for a given column, but row can only have the one type for a given column and nullability cases, which means that for our cases, the row is, all of the row function has to be supported by Auro. And this performance is definitely, we saw that approximately 10 times improvement compare with the previous approach, I mean the discord, you know, but it, the bad thing is that we have, we process 100 million e events per second, and not all of the producers have the updated latest version of the Auro, which means if you want to roll out the new schema changes, like adding a new field on the schema, it's very painful. First, we need to write the code, and deploy the jobs, all of the jobs, then we need to roll out the schema. This doesn't make sense. This is, it's not good pro for production, definitely. And as, as I mentioned that, you know, the, we start digging more and finally we end up with the good, good blog post. You know, the nowadays I don't see the good blog post a lot, maybe because of the Twitter, everybody's TV, create the tweet change and it's not searchable for me. But RTB house is write a really good blog post. And I suggest you to read you guys, you know, if you are using the Auro, definitely just for Auro, it also makes 10 times faster. And for we, we find, we apply the similar idea, very similar idea with, with the row. Eventually Auro has the specific record Row is the another specific record for us, then directly we can come do that. And they they hit lots of issues and it fits our use case a lot. That's why we we thought that okay, we can re-implement what they did for our row. And now this is the solution for us. I put to you know the I gave I am giving to this talk because actually we use the, our own implementation more than one, you know, the one and a half years on production. But if don't, if I don't give the, this, you know, the presentation, most probably I will not put the, as an open source library. That's why I push myself to put put this library as an open open source. This is a sample use case. You know, first of all, the there is a one issue. I discussed with Andrew the, before the, this talk. Beam is designed very statically. It doesn't think about that schema changes. The assumption is on the Beam side, you submit your job like bad, bad jobs, and you will stop your job for schema change, and you resubmit the jobs. And there is no way to define while defining your pipeline. It doesn't matter SQL or not. You know, you cannot tell the, I have dynamic writer schema, but my reader schema is these kind of cases. It cannot handle the that things. That's why we end up with the implementing our own uh, serializer and deserializer steps rather than using the coders. You know, the beam coders, you can set, like set coder and say our, our coder of something else. It is It has really good performance. But the issue is that if you have like us, you know, the in oh, sorry, you see that we have dynamic writer schema, which means 
variety of the writer schema and we want to end up with the, a one reader schema cases, it doesn't support it. How we are going, to, how we are supporting that is these cases, we use the Kafka and we put the schema information on Kafka header and we have the schema registry. We pull the schema based on the information and then use it. Use it. Uh, let me introduce the usage to the, this, you know, the, I put to this sample also in the library project. Yes, correct. No, just version. We just say, you know, the based on the log type, let's say the network traffic log type, then one, two, three, four, five kind of numbers. Exactly. We we cache the schema in machine because we put the you know the schema registry usually when they people give the talk it's I feel like it's a big deal. But eventually what, what we end up with to do that, we are using GCS. We load the schemas on GCS, then whenever we pipeline is start, it just download the schema, whatever the version it is, on machine and put in memory. If the first it checks the in memory hash map. If the, if doesn't have that, then download it and put on machine. And if pipeline, you know, the, because of the auto scaling, it may reschedule the pipeline or other things. Then it may lose the in memory state. At that time, it it checks the machine. If the machine has the schema, then upload uh, update the in memory. And you see that this this code, you know, the in setup method, you have to introduce to some service registry which is basically uh, the serialization registry. It will be used by uh, your code dynamically. You just need to say, say create the registry. Then rest of the things is, you, you know, the reading a value from context beam thing. The only difference is in here, this line, you see that. It says, to, to registries, it says that get, give me the raw serializer for given schema. And then you call the serialize method and it turns to the direct the row. Do you have any question so far? Okay. Go ahead. Exactly. You are right. What we are doing that for that, I will explain a couple slides later, but basically we we have to stay in the, that assumption, right? Beam, beam row schema is, we get the latest schema when we start the job. And if we need to change the beam jobs schema, we have to restart it. I Before this talk, I just discussed with Andrew you know, how we can handle on the fly schema changes. Like, you know, the, we have cases like select star and filter something else. We don't care about the fields, right? Then maybe on the beam side, we can detect it. The, if field is not used, then we can, we don't serialize them, deserialize them, then keep it as a byte array and pa pass through the circle. We haven't worked on the that side. So far, I will explain tomorrow also too. We introduce a new internal service. Whenever there's a schema change, it goes through all of the circles it's written and deployed. If schema changes affect any circle, then we restart the those jumps. Okay, this is initial benchmark results. This is the old way, the beam way, and this is the new new way. Basically, this is the same amount of the resources, just how much throughput we increase in order to make it understandable. And this is a real on production. We put the exact same job with the new version, old version and new version. And you see the resource consumption. Our jobs is sorry, maybe I I, for, I forgot to mention that 
all of our jobs is streaming and all of them is on data flow. Not all of them, most of them. And auto scaling is enabled and we use streaming engine just you know to give the disinformation to make sense to you. And as you see the, these jumps, it's because of the auto scaling based on what we have the throughput. But both of the, these job is process exact same to Kafka topic and from the same offset, which means they are processing the same. And this is a cost reduction. Maybe you can see in that, that, that uh, we, we start using four times less CPU after the this change. That's why I, I just want to give the, this talk. Maybe you can take the leverage for idea or library itself. Do you wonder that what we did? <laughs> okay, you see in here, right? Uh, oops. Wow, sorry. Here, 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 yes. You see the here get row deserializer method, right? I will start from here. You know, the I will not. This rest of the things is user space for me. That's why I will go like pulling in the idea or IntelliJ, you know, the you go through the breakpoints. Like, let's do that in that way. Okay, you call the get serializer, and you previously on the setup method, you create the serdes registry, right? It's check the cache and try to find what you have. But how it's going to be checked at? You give the writer schema and reader schema. We were very lucky, our is provide some kind of hash k generation on top of the schema and it's unique and it's always same if schema is not changing then we create a, a tuple basically reader schema and writer schema hashes as a key then ask ask the cache do you have the that key this is a basic starting point if let's say initial time right you don't have the NS serializer or deserializer by the way I use the serializer and deserializer uh, changeably because the idea is the same. One of them is reading from file and put on the memory. The another one is the writing from memory to file. The only difference is deserialization is difficult because you have to know schema in advance. You don't know, you only know the binary itself. Serialization is easy. You already have schema, you have you already have the data, even you don't have it, you can try to cast it to f f figure out it. Okay. Then it couldn't find the any deserializer from the cache. Then we go with the beam way, you know, the same same idea. First, whatever the code I show in here, you know. This implementation we call dummy serializer or deserializer. You know, don't don't mind that. Just we generate a dummy dummy serializer and turn to the customer as a deserializer or serializer and put back the cache. Whenever the code itself, you know, the initial job start like one minute around ish. It use always uh, dummy serializer, which is the old way and today's way what the beam is doing. But at the same time, we realize the demand, right? Someone is want to serialize it. Then we trigger the code generation. This is the key part, actually, that I learned from the RTB house blog post. They try to do code generation, but Avro, Avro has the encoder and decoder logic. In addition to that, there should be some grammar resolution, schema grammar resolution. I, this code generation is due to that thing. In the separate thread, we trigger the code generation, which look to schema and try to generate a Java code according to that schema. And as, as I say that, you know, the, we return the dummy serializer now we start generating Java code. For here, you know, I checked the Beam SDK. They use ByteBuddy. 
But I didn't understand the bite by the quite, to be honest. You know, the, it was very complicated, at least for me. I used the code model. Maybe you heard it. It's very old library. It used to be part of the JDK. Then now Oracle doesn't want to ship that. And looks like they other uh, they donate the Eclipse, and under the Glassfish, I used that library. First, we generate the actual Java code. You can see that as a text file. Then we compile it uh, until the Java eight. You know the data flow doesn't have the JDK on the runners. That's why I I include the compilation code. But now Java eleven. Everything is JDK, that's why there is no issue to compile. And put on the class path. You may say that you know the if you load that class on the class path, then you cannot unload it. This is true. But the, I generate the Java code based on the writer and reader schema result, which is a unique. I don't want to unload it. There is a one caveat. The only thing is that maybe I, I will not use any more that things. And it will be redundant class, you know, the, for a while, but it is okay. And this is the actual generation. You do you see that? You cannot. Okay. <laughs> I can share my machine. Okay. If you are interested in the, this project, you know, the just two days ago, the, even not today. Sorry, yesterday I pushed the GitHub. Still, I don't have documentation or anything else. Just you know, the I can help you, you know, for anything, anything else. Normally, we implemented this logic in the company for JSON, CSV, Auro. Uh, that's all. Three three types for serialization. Uh, serialization part. This serialization part only Auro. I. I shared the serialization part. I'm going to implement the serialization part also too. But what is next? You know, the, as I mentioned that I will publish the serializer part. Then I will put more document and benchmark tool. You know, the yesterday, day before yesterday, I implemented our random record generator. I realized that there is no any our random record generator. And hopefully, in a couple of days, you will have the complete Auro library, serialization and deserialization. And after that, I will try to create a PR for Beam to replace current Auro coder, and especially for Beam SQL side. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>